Hey there, this is Olivia with a fashion tech support video about portfolios. Finally! <sighs> On a video titled Before You Ask Me About CSM, I talked about two very important things people ask me about applying. It's not even eight minutes long, so you can go and watch it before you start watching this one. But let me just recap real quick about the first important thing. Um, so I made a, another video about uh, showing my portfolio, the portfolio that I did during fashion folio, uh, and that I used to apply to the graduate diploma course. And in that video, I like I still uh, did that video with the mindset of a student or a newly graduate that's showing her portfolio in a job interview or showing to a course leader on a admissions interview. So it doesn't offer you any uh, actionable advice for your portfolio. So I committed to make to making another video to explain what this portfolio thing is uh, is all about and what you need to include in yours if you want to apply to CSM. Okay, let's get started with number one. What is a portfolio? <coughs> Seriously, I had a boss once that had the habit of answering seemingly obvious questions with a dare. But you know what? Bear with me, because if you really knew what uh, the answer was, you wouldn't be here. I didn't know, so no shame in that. So a portfolio is not like a beautifully edited compilation of your work. Like you're thinking of like a book like this. Uh, so this is what people like to call, for example, coffee table books, because nobody actually reads them. You wouldn't have to be a real art and design nerd to actually want to read this. And uh, like, you have to be a real nerd to actually understand the information that they put aside each picture. So your portfolio is not a coffee table book. If you go through a book like this, you don't actually know what uh, steps Schiaparelli took to come up with her designs. And uh, people even say that Schiaparelli was one of those, uh, design not actually designer, couturier, couturier that didn't even know how to draw or how to sew or how to drape and that didn't stop her from making some really amazing stuff in the end books like these um, are for like final consumers and the person that's gonna consume like the the design and the clothes the accessories the bags the perfumes and then the the picture books they're not necessarily interested in uh, like how everything came to be but your portfolio is not meant for fashion consumers because when you say you want to study at CSM you're saying that you want to be the nerd that's going to create the fabulous thing you need to show how you work, the step-by-step -step you follow to generate new ideas. That's also called your creative process. This is what a course leader needs to assess because you don't have, you don't get proper classes at CSM and uh, all the work is done independently. So if you don't already have a uh, creative process you are just gonna get lost so it's not about talents if you just want to boil it down to talents you're kind of saying that oh, okay I'm you could be admitted to a calculus course without 
any prior knowledge of mathematics just because you're smart. Like, maybe you're super smart, maybe you're super talented, maybe you're so much more creative than all your pals, but come on! There's so many people that want to get into CSM. You can't just think that you're entitled to a place there because you're talented or this and that. So it's not about talent. It's not about being more creative than uh, your classmates in your previous fashion course. And that's really great news because that means you can figure out a way to get a place at CSM even if your work currently sucks. How you can produce better work with CSM's own secret formula, research and design development. Maybe you never heard the term design development, but research, uh, again, it might feel like the duh moment. What I want to say is, so probably on your job, on your, your first course, you, you're just getting loads of pictures from like fashion blog bleh, fashion bloggers runway shows pinterest and then you're making very neat powerpoint slides with stock photos and uh, color cards and calling it mood boards and uh, then you're jumping straight to design so you're just copying whatever is on your pictures or you're just pulling out ideas out of nowhere or you're just trying too hard to make all the elements in your research come together Be that is because you didn't make sense of your research you didn't engage with it and you didn't take any action after gathering it it's basically what most of us do with like YouTube tutorials for example makeup like you, you watch the tutorial and then you find everything like really really cute but then you don't do anything with it and you just moan every time you see someone with a proper smoky eye so here's how i went about with my own research and design developments so i started with the usual pictures of pearl um, as in the patchworked indigo dyed rags and i also wanted to include references of kimonos, anime, and I wanted to distress and paint fabrics, and I wanted to include the Sashko stitching, and while was, I was looking for pictures of Japanese peasants that could have worn Boro back in that time, I found these interesting straw costumes, and I was also told to look at other indigo dyed stuff and um, workwear. So I got pictures of miners in denim overalls that were paired with oversized white t-shirts. Oh, and I always forgot Robert Rauschenberg's paintings as reference, the reference for the messy paint strokes that I wanted to use. You see, there was a lot, 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 lot going on to get a lineup from uh, from all that uh, you have to cut it in smaller chunks so you have to because you have to find a way to digest and assimilate all the elements that's coming from the research and that's where you start your design development for me it started with collages so I could create a visual representation of how all the elements in my research went together in my head. Here I want to do a sidebar about how engaging with your research without any expectations of um, what the outcome should be um, is something that can that's really revealing about uh, yourself and what you actually like because I always thought of myself as this very brainiac, uh, very methodic person that I thought it was into minimalism but if I look at my collages 
with an open heart, I get to reflect like, wow, I'm actually quite chaotic in my thinking. What is happening here? Um, but coming back to the main topic, I found out I really like making these collages and at first it took me a really long time to uh, to make each one of them and now I'm much faster and it's a good thing be because in the end they're just there to inform color, textures, um, shapes, proportions um, or even like an overall mood but they're not um, there is no actual design coming from these collages. Remember, this is not a portfolio to apply to a graphics design course or to fashion illustration. It's great to have nice pictures in your portfolio, but once I once you have them, it's time to move on to materials and stuff you can actually make garments with. Uh, so, from the shapes and techniques from my collages, I started to develop textile samples. And here my project has started to get a bit more real and more believable, because now I'm showing that I actually care about clothes. But at first... Um, but at first, I try to make sketches based on my collages and, and these small samples and it didn't work because there was something missing. So I had a mood, I had materials, I had shapes, I had proportions in mind, but I tried to jump straight into garment design without understanding how these materials would work in the scale that I was proposing in my collages. So it was time to make my samples in a much larger size and try them on a person. Because remember, we're doing fashion. If you're playing with proportions, they need to be investigated in relation to whoever's gonna wear your designs. And trying these mock-ups, twirls, samples, prototypes, uh, whatever you, you, you're gonna call it, on a person makes your design development a lot more believable and it's a lot more dynamic way of working at this stage. You can leave the mannequin for when you're making finished garments. I wasted a lot of time until I finally supersized my samples and I also wasted a lot of time making them really nice uh, just as nice as the small samples, which wasn't necessary. If they're just studies, you should make them really fast and um, don't spend a fortune because you can decide during the fitting that you, you want to chop it in half or you want to twist them, you want to do crazy stuff with it, have the model jump or dance or roll on the floor. And this is still like there's still time to play around so make it interesting and don't waste a lot of time don't waste a lot of money and if you create mood boards you can explore the mood and the attitudes that you're getting from your pictures uh, now that I know how these weird things I've been producing would look like on a, on a person now I can start thinking of uh, designs and um, I'm just I don't have a proper lineup for this project as I told you on the portfolio overview video so I'm just gonna show up until um, the the second the second book uh, what I did was beside each collage with uh, each design development I um, made the uh, technical drawings as if I were to uh, figuring out how to construct each um, each of these giant shapes, and this is a style that suits me because I actually like to make technical drawings. 
but this might not be your thing so you go and you try different styles of illustrations you try different ways of working and see which one you like and then you keep developing it if you're not good with bodies or faces or uh, your models end up looking too cartoonish and uh, silly or they end up looking like monsters or it, maybe it just takes you too long to make a, a, a full body sketch from from scratch then find a different way to convince whoever is looking um, your portfolio that yes you want to make cool clothes for cool people not monsters not paper dollies with ridiculously long limbs, not faceless dummies, not those one-eyed divas they like to draw when you buy shiny fabric to make a bridesmaid dress. It's okay if you don't have a uh, unique style of illustration like the ones that you see um, on One Granary or on fashion illustration books. You can just draw over a template and that already informs the, um, and they'll already show you're sophisticated enough to understand that you're designing clothes, like highly desirable clothes for actual humans that will want to spend good money to have them. Because let's be real, if you're watching this, I know it's not because you, you want a job at Bushka. Then what? You did your research, you did your design development, now it's time to make a lineup. That's the one thing that I didn't do, but the magic of um, following this uh, process is that you don't have to, um, you don't have to wreck your brain trying to come up with something 100% uh, original just by looking at your research. It's not like, look at research, draw something new. Your designs will come from your design developments after you engage with your research. So you see, this creative process thing is not supposed to be mysterious or complicated, but it's also not like one, two, three as I'm describing here. Uh, here I'm just, I'm again trying to give you an overview of a project that took me over six months and I can't vomit all the knowledge I got uh, while doing it. Can't do this, that all at once because one, you're gonna be paralyzed with the information overload and you're not going to be able to use any of it. And uh, two, Fashion Folio is a 12 to 15 thousand pound course with some of the most experienced tutors that you could get. So it's not disrespectful, it's just really <coughs> stupid to think a YouTube video could give you the same value as having that one-to-one -one, um, contact with them. Remember that I said at the beginning that CSM doesn't have any proper classes? Uh, so that also means that it would take a lot more than videos and textbooks to emulate the, the CSM methods. Having said that, this video is getting really long and I'm gonna stop here before I just get before I lose steam and drop this YouTube career for good again kind of uh, and this is a hint for you as well um, a portfolio to apply to a uni like CSM is a huge task so um, keep your anxiety in check and know that you're not gonna do it all in one sit. Like, don't even assume that you're gonna do it in one or two weeks. Um, and stick around for part two. And in the meantime, head over to my website to read my articles about uh, fashion folio and graduate diploma. 
And if you need fully custom portfolio advice, I got a special plan for you. See you soon and happy 2020. Bye.